Okay, so if you're looking for some COVID-19 investment opportunities, that's what we're gonna run through on this video. Now there's absolutely no doubt that when you have a massive problem and you find a solution for that problem, you can make a lot of money. So if you're thinking that from a business perspective, but from an investor's perspective, how can we get in on that? How can we back these companies that are gonna have a big solution? Obviously at the moment with COVID-19, we have a huge worldwide problem talk of the biggest recession in the UK terms, certainly for 300 years worldwide, this could be absolutely massive. They are st still talking of lights at the end of the tunnel, the vaccines that are rolling out and so on, but there is now more and more chatter saying COVID-19 is here for the long term, it's here to stay. We're gonna need annual uh, vaccinations, maybe even twice a year uh, and so on. So this is a massive, massive problem for the world um, but the vaccine companies are producing some great results so far so what i'm going to do on this video is run through some of the bigger companies see what those investments could have done for you so far if you'd managed to get in those um, earlier on a year or so ago but also highlight some real exciting some of the smaller ones much higher risk in terms of whether they're going to succeed or not but you don't need to invest so much money because they are going to give potentially such so much higher returns. So we'll run through those as well on this video. So let's jump in, have a look at a few of these companies first of all. Now I've selected on this spreadsheet here, uh, we've got some of the major companies like Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Sanofi. Um, these are the companies out there. Uh, one of these, the Pfizer-BioNTech, is approved by the FDA already. Uh, Johnson & Johnson or the Janssen uh, section of Johnson & Johnson, they are hoping for uh, approval under emergency use on the 23rd of February, the FDA are meeting to um, discuss that. AstraZeneca, interestingly, still hasn't been approved in America, but that is approved now in the UK and uh, Europe. And Sanofi also has not been approved yet. That's still in clinical trials stage one and two. But let's have a look at some of the other details on these companies and see whether these would have been a good place to have made an investment. So Pfizer, first of all, well, they've got 83, sorry, 88,300 employees around the world. Market capitalization. So the market capitalization on Pfizer is now $193 billion. The share price on the 23rd of March 2020 was $26.99 and the share price today as I'm recording this video 13th of February 2021 is $34.72. So if you'd invested $1,000 back on the 23rd of March very much at the start of the pandemic thinking okay Pfizer's they may be one of the winners you'd, you've got to have a bit of foresight but it's a huge company already anyway. Um, $1,000 invested back then would be worth $1,286 now. So a 28.6% return. Very healthy on the surface of it, but we'll run through some other details and see if this really does add up to be a good investment or not. Let's have a quick look next at Johnson & Johnson, or Janssen is their department looking at the COVID-19. Janssen itself, I think, has around about, no, I can't remember the figure, but they've got 130,000 employees, Johnson & Johnson Worldwide, one of the real giants in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, worth $438 billion. Uh, share price back on the 23rd of March was $111.41. Share price today, or yesterday, $166. So that's a 49% return. So $1,000 investment will be $1,495 now. So very good um, return there. AstraZeneca, the Oxford AstraZeneca, they are doing their um, vaccine very cheaply. Um, and they've got 70,600 employees, $131 billion market capitalization, and their share price, I've taken these in pounds sterling, went from £6,831 per share to £7,252. So total gain on that is just 6%. So $1,000 investment would be worth $1,061 now. Um, so again, not a huge return, but again, this is a huge company. So even something like COVID-19 is not going to make a huge dent on their profits because they are such a big company anyway. And then let's look at Sanofi GSK, uh, GlaxoSmithKline. They're in clinical trial stage one stroke two. Um, 
I haven't got down the number of employees there, but their market capitalization, $119 billion. So again, these four are big, four big companies. This is just the Sanofi um, for their market capitalization, not the GSK. Uh, share price in euros is 72.15 on the 23rd of March, currently 78.16. So it's an 8% gain, $1,000 uh, be worth $1,084. So not overly impressive results in a way, because if you had invested on the S&P 500 just as an index, uh, the, the index value on the 23rd of March was 2,237.4. Uh, yesterday it was 3,934. So you'd actually be up 75, 76%. So a thousand pound investment, thousand dollar investment in the S&P 500 over that period of almost a year, would have grown to 1,758. So you'd have been better rather than trying to bet on or gamble or invest. <laughs> and different people use different terminologies. I actually had someone say to me the, the other day, um, I don't like your betting. I'm not interested in betting on the stock market. Um, but probably most people watching this video will know that the stock market is an absolutely brilliant place to put your money because it's investing in companies. You're owning shares in companies that are real people that are doing work, aim for profit, they reinvest uh, and so on. So it's a great place and Warren Buffett would certainly advise you to get shares in general. Um, now let's look at some of the slightly smaller companies bit more interesting. These are stock market quoted companies still. Um, we're going to look at Moderna, Novavax and BioNTech. So BioNTech have partnered up with Pfizer's, so they are approved. Moderna are approved as well and Novavax are approved um, for their uh, COVID-19 injection as well. Um, Moderna have 1,200 staff, Novavax 375 and BioNTech 1,300. So relative to those other big companies we've said there, these are pretty small companies. Market capitalization in billions of dollars, Moderna is 72 billion, Novavax is 18 billion, BioNTech is 28 billion. So Novavax there is the, is the lower value um, company. But let's look at the share price, how they varied. Moderna on the 23rd of March was $26.57. Share price as of, as of Friday was $183.74. So a $1,000 investment would now be worth $6,915. Much, much better than the index as a whole. Much better than going into those big pharmaceutical companies. And indeed, you could have taken a smaller investment and still ended up with a better off position. So in terms of risk reward ratio, uh, it's a pretty good um, outcome there. Let's look at BioNTech as well. Uh, market capitalization, 28 billion, as I've said. Their share price, 23rd of March was $51.31. Their share price uh, as of Friday was $117. So $1,000 investment would now be worth 2,291. Again, a very, very good return there. More than doubling your money in less than a year. That's by having invested in BioNTech. Now let's have a look at Novavax. Novavax, only 375 employees. Uh, their market capitalization, 18.45, as I've said. Their share price on the 23rd of March was $10.76. Their share price as of Friday the 13th of uh, uh, February. 2021 was $289.76. That means a $1,000 investment back March last year is now worth $26,929. That is a huge gain. So even if you'd only put a $100 investment, you would have still beaten the investments um, from all except for Moderna at $1,000. So at a tenth of the risk, financially, you would have still made over $2,600 um, gain on that. So absolutely huge returns. And that's part of my point. Now, this is where it starts to get controversial because those who are in, uh, in the stock market in general, if you've got lots of money to put in the stock market, yes, you need to go in the blue chip, you need to go in the big companies to reduce your risk. But if you are like me and you like to have higher returns and higher risk, and again, I'm not saying you put all your money into these high risk uh, companies, but I'm saying you can put a smaller amount of money, but still make substantial returns. As I'm going to show you um, now, when we look at four other companies that also are working on COVID-19 vaccines. Now, before we do that, um, 
I want to give you a bit of background as to what my research on this is. Um, the World Health Organization have a list of vaccine candidates. It will be in the description below. You can go to that uh, um, vaccine candidate list yourself. But if I just bring up, you, you download a, a spreadsheet and we can see here at the moment, and this is the World Health Organization from Friday, February, th uh, February the 12th. So I'm getting my dates wrong. I was like, today's the 13th. So February the 12th. On February the 12th, the number of vaccines in clinical development was 66. The number of vaccines in preclinical development is 176. So there's 242 uh, total vaccines in development in total. 66 are now in clinical trials. Um, of these, you get, then get a breakdown of what sort of technology they're using and so on, uh, what the dosages are. We can also look at the clinical trial data. So what have we got here? We have got Sinovac, we've got AstraZeneca, we've got other companies, Janssen Pharmaceutical, part of uh, Johnson & Johnson. We've got Novavax there, Moderna, Pfizer, BioNTech, and names that you would recognize. And we get all the reports and details on this as uh, published by the World Health Organization with their clinical trials data and so on. Now, if you look through this list, there's a few interesting companies in here with their development of vaccines because we still have at the moment a huge problem with coronavirus in that to in the UK certainly we're seeing this as a problem and the UK is very advanced now and doing very successful vaccination program uh, we've just aiming for 15 million of our 67 million population have been vaccinated in uh, just about two months but we've still got this problem most of these vaccines are two doses you have to go to a professional healthcare uh, person to get the vaccine. So this is a really slow rollout. Even though we're doing it fast in injection terms, it's a very slow rollout and there's massive costs involved in that. It's not just the cost of the vaccine itself, which is generally fairly low cost, $20, $30, as low as uh, $3 for the AstraZeneca single dose, but it's the cost of the healthcare professionals, it's the cost of the administration, the cost of the locations, it's the cost of the needles, both acquiring and disposing safely. It's the cost of, you know, there are huge costs associated with just a vaccination program. But there are some companies on that list of the World Health Organization who are developing vaccines which are oral vaccines. These are thermally stable as well, so you don't need the cold chain distribution. They don't need to be stored in refrigeration. They don't need to be distributed through refrigeration. So these are really interesting plays. So let's have a look at some of these companies and look at the possible returns that there might be here as well. Now, the first company to highlight is Vaxart. They are on the stock market, uh, but they've had a setback. Their clinical trials, um, they gave them a nice headline uh, exciting figure that they, these were positive results but the analysts and other people have looked at them and said well actually they're not developing the antibodies and that's really crucial yes they protect you from uh, COVID-19 but they're not going to protect you long term is my short version of that now you may debate quite what the technicalities are that and feel free add those in the comments uh, what your own views are if you're into Vaxart uh, but let's have a look at Vaxart and see um, what the advantages are for these. Now I'm going to go through four companies that have got oral vaccines in development. Two of them are actually pretty much the same company because they're working together. So there's three out of the 66 vaccines in clinical trials. Amount. There's only three that are oral. But if any of these oral vaccines work, this will be a game changer because that will suddenly allow us to vaccinate the whole world because you won't need the healthcare professionals, you won't need the needles, you've got lots of people who won't take vaccines because of the needle phobia and so on. And you could distribute this around the world very, very rapidly because they're thermally stable. So you could deliver through normal post, straight to people, at pharma, uh, pharmacies or whatever, so people can go and collect it, take it there, and it's done. Um, so Vaxart's the first one. They've only got 14 employees. Their market capitalization as of Friday is $930 million, so $0.93 billion, so a fraction of the size of some of the other companies. Um, their share price on the 23rd of March was $1.85, and the share price uh, on Friday was $8.48. So a $1,000 investment in Vaxart uh, a year ago, back in March, would now be worth 4583 Even though they've not been 
entirely successful and even though they're only in stage one clinical trials you'd have made more money on that apart from Novavax than all the other companies I've just gone through actually it's not true you'd have made more on Moderna as well because they've been approved um, but Vaxar is certainly a very very interesting company tiny company but they've got this oral vaccine potential so if you've not checked out Vaxar yet do check those out well worth a look at um, there's also another company here called Simvivo. Now, Simvivo is a privately owned company. Um, one thing I would like to point out here, when you're investing in businesses, don't only think about stock market quoted companies. They're the easy ones to invest in because they're publicly tradable. But all publicly tradable companies at some point were smaller companies before they got to the stock market. So they are still companies that you could have invested in if you know where to go and how to get into them. As an investment they are higher risk in a technicality side of things because they're younger companies but they you don't need to put anywhere near as much money in them because your returns are potentially that much bigger um, quick example if you had invested in Pfizer's when it was a 1 billion dollar company it's now a 200 billion dollar company that's a 200 fold increase you obviously wouldn't have needed to invest it so much when it's only a 1 billion dollar company if you could have gone back in time with Pfizer's as an example um, but Simvivo, they also have an oral vaccine. They've got 16 employees and they're currently valued, uh, from what I could find out, the latest valuation, which was $60 million, so 0 0.06 of a billion dollars. Now, we don't have any share price uh, value on Simvivo, so we have to go purely on market capitalization. So they're currently worth $60 million. Now, if their vaccine, which is in clinical trials stage one already, if that's successful, this is an oral, thermally stable vaccine, if that's successful, then is it fair? Now, I'm going through two valuations here. Perhaps we could take the average value of the three smaller vaccine companies, Moderna, Novavax, and BioNTech. If uh, Simvivo get approval, they get through stage two and stage three of their clinical trials, and then get approval, as Moderna, Novavax and BioNTech have done, then the average of those three companies is a 39.82 billion valuation. Um, so Simvivo, in my mind, that could be a fair valuation. An alternative valuation, let's say that 10% of the world take a vaccination in a pill or, or receive immunity is the way I prefer to say it because we have this habit of thinking vaccination means injection. It doesn't. It means having immunity to COVID-19. So if, if Simvivo uh, managed to get 10% of the market, which would be about 500 million uh, people, and if we say $10 per pill, we'd give $5 billion worth of sales and then give it a 10 times sales revenue valuation. You're talking $50 billion. So somewhere between $40 and $50 billion, I think, is fair. Now, if they are a $40 billion company at the moment, they are just $60 million. That means a $1,000 investment in Simvivo today, at some point in the future, could be worth $663,722. So $1,000 investment, $663,000 return. That's the possibilities. That's why I get so excited by the earlier stage companies. If you can spot them early enough and spot the disruptors and spot the potential, um, then you can make an absolute fortune. And again, you don't need to invest $1,000. Invest $100, you could still make $66,000 if this becomes a $40 billion company, which is the average of Moderna, Novavax and BioNTech at the moment. Um, so clearly very, very strong. And that's just 10% of the market as well at 50 billion. Um, but are there other companies? Now, how would you invest in Simvivo? They're, they're, um, there's a private equity company that is invested um, through them. You have to go and do your own research on that. And chances are you're going to struggle to be able to actually make an investment unless you know people within that company. But there is another, uh, a, another brilliant company within the World Health Organization vaccine list of candidates in the oral vaccines. And for this, you've got to do a bit, of, bit more digging. And that's what I'm going to do on this, uh, still on this video, show you a bit more background. Immunity Bio and Nant Health. Now, Immunity Bio and Nant Health are both companies set up by a uh, multi-billionaire called Patrick Soon Xiong. Um, this guy is mostly uh, Immunity Bio and Nant Health, um, all sorts of technology in biotechnology. And their, their main goal before COVID-19 was the um, 
removal of cancer, expulsion of cancer, I can't think what the proper phrase is, prevention of cancer, not cure of cancer, but prevention of cancer. Um, they also do um, have some great drugs which do treat cancer as well, and they're getting some very good results on that. So look up Immunity Bio. Again, there'll be a link in the description. They seem very much undervalued and under... Uh, research from what I can find out on other videos on YouTube and so on. So Immunity Bio and Nant Health, they have an oral vaccine, they also have the injectable vaccine. Uh, Immunity Bio themselves have got 170 employees, Nant Health have got 398 last data research. The valuation on Nant Health, which is a stock market quoted company, is $540 million, so 0.54 of a billion. So again, relative to the other players in the market, it is a tiny market cap at the moment. If you had invested $1,000 in Nant Health back on the 23rd of March 2020 at $1.28 per share, they're now worth $4.80. So $1,000 investment would have given you $3,750. Now again, relative to the size and their potential, that I still think is a bargain as to what they could do. Now, one of the other things that you'll notice if you read through the research data with Immunity Bio is that they've partnered up with a tiny British biotech company called IOS Bio. Now, IOS Bio are based in Burgess Hill. They only have 12 employees. They are also valued at 60 million US dollars. That was the last valuation. Um, and IOS Bio have developed the delivery technology. So that's what Immunity Bio went to IOS Bio for and said, look, you've got a vaccine, you can put vaccines in a pill, you've got the technology, you've got the patents for that, let's partner up as a team and let's do this. So IOS Bio have signed a worldwide agreement. Again, I'll put links in the description so there's more details on this. Um, and IOS Bio, I am actually a shareholder with IOS Bio. Again, they're a small privately owned business. Um, I don't know how you could get shares at the moment, but certainly I got shares uh, thanks to the Angel Business Club, which I've been a member for almost six years now, and they invest in small startup companies. They're a private equity club. Um, so as a member of the club, I just pay my subscription to the club, my club membership, like paying for, paying for a subscription to a golf club, uh, and I get the benefits of the club. And one of the big benefits of the club does is they go in and do all the hard work and the investigation, and they invest in companies just like IOS Bio, um, early stage startup but with disruptor potential. We've got several companies, but this is um, we're looking at particularly at the COVID investment opportunities here. So I do recommend you sign up with the Angel Business Club anyway. It's only £81 a month. You'll get £72 worth of shares every month. So it only actually costs £9 a month in terms of actual out-of-pocket cost. Um, but that will give you access um, to shares like IOS Bio, and they will probably add this to their internal trading. So you might be able to buy some shares in IOS Bio from other members in the club who haven't necessarily spotted the value of those shares yet. So there's a link in the description to sign up for that. But let's have a quick look again, valuation for IOS Bio and Immunity Bio. Now IOS Bio is the smaller company. There is talk now that they are looking at a stock flotation potentially later on this year. Obviously, I would say that's going to depend on their clinical trials, but if that's positive, then that would line up very well for a flotation uh, and IPO for IOS Bio. Um, they have, again, an oral vaccine. Uh, it's COVID-19. They've been working for years. They were working with uh, um, Zika and SARS and so on. Uh, just 12 employees and $60 million valuation. So again, $1,000 in IOS Bio today. If they're successful and they're valued at the same, uh, the average of the Moderna, Novavax and BioNTech, a third of those, uh, sorry, the average of those three companies, which are still small in terms of the biotech sector, uh, that's a $40 billion valuation, which means $1,000 invested uh, at the moment would potentially be worth $663,000. Now, again, stock market, you're probably thinking, those are just ridiculous returns. This is the point of early stage investing, angel investing. When you look at Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, if you get into a tiny company, uh, uh, another illustration I know that I can give you very simply, if you'd invested $1,000, actually I can't do it with $1,000, if you invested $100 in Facebook when it first started, uh, by the time that floated on the stock market eight years later, you'd have been a millionaire. So can it happen? Absolutely. Um, and that is very much the excitement of those early stage investments. But like I've said earlier on in the video, it's not 
don't put all your money into early stage investments. They are risky, but they can give you spectacular returns. They're the sort of returns that even a small investment can give you a return that could literally change your life. The bigger companies, you might get 10, 20% a year. Um, you know, they are harder to work with and you need bigger sums of money. So in one sense, they are higher risk. Um, I think I've covered most things I wanted to say on this. So do check out the links in the description. Like I have said, if you want to get shares in IOS Bio, I would recommend you join the Angel Business Club because there may well be the opportunity very soon to acquire some shares from other members in the club. Uh, there's no shares available at the moment, but they very often do come in the internal trading exchange that they have at the Angel Business Club, which is an internal peer-to-peer -peer trading. Um, I certainly pick up a good number of shares there and they're well worth having. So I hope you found this video useful. Give me a thumbs up. It'll be give me a real help. Keep the video promoting and, and help me to produce more videos like this. Hopefully you found it useful. Do subscribe to my channel if you want more updates on these companies, more updates on early stage companies to get in way before most of the stock market punters and, and analysts uh, get to review those. If you'd like to get those really big return possibilities, then do subscribe to my channel. I also cover uh, some cryptocurrency as well as early stage investments and some general life hacks. Um, but thanks for watching the video. We'll catch you again on the next video. Thanks for watching.